This is a tutorial video for Owlet 9, which is our second kit. This kit is composed of a PCB, 9 LEDs, a microcontroller, solder wire, resistors, and we will be using a light sensor. You will need wire cutters. Any wire cutters should do, or you can use the same ones we are using. And you may optionally use a hand tool assistant. You will need tape to hold down some of the components. We will also be using a solder gun. We will start with the PCB. You will notice that the PCB contains an area labeled ATtiny84. In that area, you will find 14 pinholes. One of the pinholes is square, while the rest are circles. This pinhole is also labeled P1, which stands for pin 1. We will be taking the microcontroller and placing it on the board so that the triangle on the microcontroller lines up with the pinhole that is labeled pin 1. We will be using tape to hold down the microcontroller while we solder it in place. We can then flip the board over and proceed with soldering. We will be using the solder wire that was provided with the kit as well as a solder gun. For safety, we will be using protective glasses during the solder process. The soldering process is simple. Just place the solder gun onto one of the pins, wait a moment for the area to heat, and then place the solder wire provided with your kit onto the tip of the gun so that some of the solder melts onto the pin. Then lift the wire and then the gun. Be careful not to overlap any melted solder onto another pin. This will connect the pins and will cause the chip to malfunction. Again, we will place the solder gun down first, wait a moment, and then add the solder wire. Then remember to lift the wire first, and then the gun. This is how the completed solder process should look. We will now proceed with soldering the resistors. This kit contains 10 resistors. 9 resistors will be used for the LEDs and 1 resistor will be used for the sensor. These two types of resistors are easy to tell apart by using the stripes located around each resistor. 
The first resistor contains stripes with the colors brown, black, orange and gold. The resistor that will be used for the LEDs contains stripes with the colors brown, bluish green, black and gold. The nine resistors that contain the bluish green stripe will be used for each of the nine LEDs. The single resistor with the orange stripe will be used for the sensor. On the PCB, you will notice nine sections labeled R1 through R9. This is where we will be placing our nine resistors for the nine LEDs. To prepare the resistors for the PCB, we will have to bend each of the resistor's legs 90 degrees. We will do this for each resistor. We will now place each of the nine resistors with the bluish green stripe into the nine slots that are provided for the resistors. Simply place each of the legs of a, of a resistor into the pinholes at each side of a label. It does not matter which leg goes into the circle or the square pinhole since resistors are reversible. Repeat this process until all the resistors except the one with the orange stripe are in place on the PCB. Once all resistors are in place, we will bend each of the legs towards the edge of the PCB so that the resistors will hold in place while we solder. We can now go ahead and solder each leg of the resistors using the same method as with the microcontroller. First, place the solder gun down onto the pin, wait for the pin to heat, and then use the solder wire to solder the pin into place. Lift the wire and then the gun. We will repeat this process for each pin and resistor until all nine resistors are in place. As you can see, the orientation of each resistor doesn't matter. Some resistors may be oriented with the gold stripe side of the resistor in the square pinhole, and others may have the gold stripe side of the resistor in the circular pinhole. With resistors, this doesn't matter. It will work either way. In a moment, we will be moving on to the soldering of our final resistor, which contains the orange stripe. But first we must remove the excess pin wire that is on the bottom of our kit. For this we will use the wire cutters. You can cut pretty close to the solder but do not cut close enough so as to affect the solder.
Now we can move on to the soldering of the final resistor. This resistor will be located near the edge of the PCB and is in the area labeled R10K. This resistor contains the colors brown, black, orange, and gold. In the same way as before, we will bend each leg 90 degrees and place the resistor into the two pinholes without worrying about orientation. We can now solder the final resistor into place and cut off its ends as we did with the other nine resistors. Again, resistor one through nine will be used for the LEDs and the final resistor will be used for the sensor. You will now notice an area at the edge of the PCB which contains pins for nine LEDs. Each area is labeled LED and the number of the LED. Each area for a single LED contains a rounded circular form and a flat area at the very edge of the board. If we take a look at an LED, the bottom of the LED is circular and then becomes flat in one area. The LED will match the form that is on the board. Unlike the resistors, the orientation for LEDs is important and must be correct. If we take a closer look at the LED, you will notice that one leg of the LED is longer than the other. The longer leg is the positive side of the LED, and the shorter leg is the negative side. Let's look again at the PCB. Each area for a single LED contains a square and a circle base for the pinhole. The square will be the long leg, or positive, and the circle will be the short leg, or the negative. We will now place an LED with its longer leg going into the square and the shorter leg going into the circle. We can do this for each LED until all LEDs are in place. Once all LEDs are in place, we can either solder them into place as is, or we can get creative with the way we place the LEDs into each slot before we solder them into place. We decided to get creative and do a bars formation for, LED for the LEDs. The soldering method is the same no matter what you are soldering on this kit. Remember to cut off any excess endings for each LED. Now let's move on to the sensor. The sensor will go into the area that is marked SNR. The sensor, like the resistors, does not have polarity so feel free to place whichever leg you wish into either of the pinholes. You can place the sensor close to the board or you can have it further up. Once you have chosen the position of your sensor you can go ahead and solder it into place.
Finally, we will be soldering the last component onto the kit. The battery pack's two wires will be soldered to an area that has a plus and a minus. The red wire will go into the plus pinhole, and the black wire will go into the minus pinhole. Go ahead and place each of the wires into the respective pinholes and solder it into place. Now that you have soldered on your battery pack, pop in some batteries in the orientation that is marked on the inside of the battery compartment. We will use the on switch on the battery pack to power on the kit. Once powered on, if there is light in the room, the sensor will detect light and the LEDs will be off. Just place your hand over the sensor or turn off the lights to watch the LEDs light up. Once you lift off your hand, the microprocessor will finish the current cycle and the LEDs will turn off.